Hi, I'm Gene Benson. I want to talk to you today just briefly about one of the most misunderstood concepts in aviation, or at least in aerodynamics, and that is the power curve. In order to understand the power curve, we need to review some basic concepts first. First concept we'll talk about is drag. We know that drag is the resistance of the airplane to move through the air. When we review the four forces acting on the airplane, drag is the one that is pointing out the back, working to hold us back in the air. There are two parts to drag. The first is parasite drag. Parasite drag has three components. The first is form drag. That's just the various parts, such as the windshield, the landing gear, and so on, trying to be pulled through the air. The second is skin friction drag. That's the resistance of the air to move over the surfaces. And the third is interference drag, and that's where parts come together, such as where a strut uh, strikes a wing surface. The three of those together make up parasite drag. Now, parasite drag increases with the square of the airspeed. So a little bit more airspeed results in considerably more uh, parasite drag. The second part of drag is induced drag. Induced drag is a function of lift. We know that lift acts perpendicular to the cord line of the wing. Well, when we're in level flight, that lift is acting upward and that's where we want it. But as we increase the angle of attack, such as when we go into slow flight, the cord line tilts up Therefore, the lift vector starts to tilt aft. We have a rearward component of lift, which is actually drag, and that's uh, specifically induced drag. Now, total drag is the sum of the parasite drag plus the induced drag. Let's look at the concepts on a graph. The horizontal axis is the airspeed, and the vertical axis is the drag. As we said, the parasite drag increases with the square of the airspeed. And we can look at how the induced drag decreases with the angle of attack. Notice that our plot in this example begins at the power on stall speed. The best way to visualize this is the airplane is at full power and has just recovered from a power on stall at a high angle of attack. As we gain airspeed from the stall, we are lowering the nose and our angle of attack is decreasing. Along with the decreased angle of attack, we have a decrease in induced drag. Now if we superimpose the curves for parasite drag and induced drag on the same graph, we can see the total drag for any airspeed. Notice how the total drag is very high at the stall recovery, but decreases as the angle of attack decreases with our increase in airspeed. But just as we start to take advantage of the low induced drag as we near the cruising speed, the fact that the parasite drag increases with the square of the airspeed really becomes a major factor. The total drag starts to increase rapidly as we gain additional airspeed. Let's simplify our graph and just look at the total drag curve. We can then add a thrust available curve. This is for a fixed pitch propeller. The curve has its particular shape because of the difference in propeller efficiency at different airspeeds. The power on stall speed is found at the lower speed at which the curves cross. This would be the speed at which the airplane would stall when doing a departure stall at full power. The curves cross again at a higher airspeed. This would be the maximum level flight speed. It is not the red line speed, but simply how fast the airplane will go at level flight with full power applied. Technically, best rate of climb airspeed, or V sub Y, occurs at the airspeed where maximum power is available, while best angle of climb airspeed, or V sub X, occurs at the airspeed where maximum thrust is available. There are actually some other variables, such as the angle of the thrust line, but that is a bit too involved for our discussion today. We should note that the airplane climbs because of excess thrust. The greater the distance between the curves, the more excess thrust we have, and the greater the rate of climb. This explains why rate of climb decreases as altitude increases. The thrust available is decreasing because the engine is producing less power. Flying in the region of reverse command is typically called being behind the power curve. Behind the power curve simply means that more power is required to maintain level flight at slower airspeeds. Note the considerable difference between airspeeds for best angle and best rate of climb at low altitudes where the go-arounds occur. Here's a tip. For minimum altitude loss on a stall recovery, lower the nose to the horizon or just below and hold the attitude until the airplane accelerates to VX. Then increase pitch to maintain VX until all the obstacles are cleared. 
So you see, the power curve really isn't such a mystery after all. Please check out my website, genebenson.com, and join my mailing list if you haven't already done so. I promise not to fill your inbox. I'll send my monthly safety newsletter, Vectors for Safety, on the first of each month, and on occasion send an update of a notice of an upcoming webinar or safety event. You can also follow me on Twitter. I am at gene underscore Benson. Thanks for watching.